it's just me and you today. Just you and me, Caroline, and whoever you are. I don't know you personally. No character today, other than the character that I've created to move about in society. We all have one of those. Just me and you, and I'm doing something that I said I'd never do. I'm doing ASMR. <laughs> Eggs on me, right? Egg on my face. I said that I would never do it. There's a record of me saying again and again that I would never do it in comment sections. <laughs> in comment sections and such. But why? Well, I'm a comedian. I want you to be awake when I'm doing things. But on the other hand, you can laugh in your sleep. We put ourselves in boxes. And I had put myself in a box, put in myself. <laughs> I had put myself in a box that said that I didn't do ASMR. And so I did a character for you, an ASMR character. But let's get real, okay? I, Caroline, am about to do ASMR. And I'm about to be a silly little... So what's on the silly ASMR schedule? So what's on the silly ASMR schedule, you might be asking yourself. Well, today, we are going to be going through this book. It is called Collectibles and Antiques Handbook and Price Guide 2021 to th through 2022, The Indispensable Guide to What It's Really Worth by Judith Miller. This is our girl Judith right here. We're just gonna go through the book. I'm gonna make my commentary. You would expect nothing less, I'm sure. And we'll just have a time. And there's no end goal, right? Like and subscribe. There's no end goal here. It's just to explore. Have fun together. Have a laugh together. Have a snooze together, if that is your whim. All right, let's go. I'm not going to put my face on it the whole time. I want you to be able to see what I'm seeing. So I'm going to lay her out. And I'm going to make you hover above her. All right? I said I was going to be real, so let me be real. I filmed this whole video with the book lying flat, like I just said it was going to be. Um, but then I was editing the video. And this is the first time I've used this camera. And I don't know, I thought I looked pretty. <laughs> I thought I looked pretty and I thought it would be a shame if I was only like, if my face was only in the video for like four minutes. I'm sorry, you know, this is real, whether or not it's pretty. I know some of you are probably thinking, wow, go back to the characters. And don't worry, I will go back to the characters. Like as much, yes, of course, this is just a moment of me. <laughs> don't tell me though, if you want me to go back to the character, like don't say, go back to the characters or, oh wow, well, this is the real you. I really much prefer the characters because um, that would hurt my feelings. I'm a Leo. <laughs> I'm a sensitive soul. Ask my mom. Seriously. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do the book. And away we go. Strong start. Strong start with him. How to use this book. <sighs> I find that a little insulting. 
Judith Miller thinks she's the only lady that's ever read a book. I can read Judith Miller. cookie jar probably produced by Huntley Bohr and Stevens in lithographed tin plate circa 1930 it goes for 2600 to 3200 dollars I struggle with like reading numbers <laughs> like in math and stuff one of the hardest things for me to learn was how like reading a number out loud like seeing the numbers on the page like if it's a three four zero 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 and knowing that you say that 34,000 instead of 3400 or 34 uh, it's just like it's a lot of work for me and I'm working every time that I say 3200 I'm like I have to like actively use my brain to be able to read these four digit numbers. Anyway, this is a bit creepy. Lift the child, get the cookie. <laughs> Michelin man. Painted metal Michelin man advertising figure. Would you know that Michelin made tires if you saw this figure with no context? The head is very Casper esque. The bow legs, right? We've got that's bow, that's bow legged. Santa Claus fairground ball game with bust of Santa Claus with open mouth above the playing area with painted numbers and instructions on a painted wooden base. You can see them. Anyways. I, I don't know. Can you see? I'm trying to make sure that you can see the absolute horror on Santa Claus's face. He is petrified, petrified of what's happening to him. Santa Claus says, the children, they're throwing balls in my mouth again. I don't enjoy this, not one bit. I don't know why I did a Santa, oh, I, I don't know why I did a Santa Claus with a British accent. Um, I don't think Santa would be British. No offense if you're from the United Kingdom, you know? Okay. Yeah, he's terrified. He's upset. This is an unkind thing to do to Santa Claus. And they say we're corrupting today's kids. It's a bulldog. A late 19th century Austrian cold 
painted bronze bulldog by Franz Bergman with teeth exposed. This is making me feel like I don't know how to read. Like the words, this, just like the way these descriptions are written, it's just like words, words, words. You can hear it. Anyway, they say that breeding of bulldogs has gotten worse and we're breeding for worse features, but like I've never seen a bulldog that looks as inbred as that one. It's just a very, very under underbite. Good thing I acted out the underbite for you, huh? first edition, published by Jonathan Cape, London, 8th volume, original cloth, some browning, some spotting. So those are, these are like real life examples of things that have been valued by real valuers. I wonder how you get into that. I wonder how you get into like being someone who evaluates. I'm certain that's incorrect. Being somebody who you know what I mean. Antiques and collectibles. Maybe you just have to come from rich parents, like be around a lot of expensive stuff. Maybe, well, that doesn't. Maybe you have to go to school. Maybe you go to college for money. <laughs> Artifacts and money. A double major. Yeah, but if you have William Golding's Lord of the Flies, it could be worth $3,200 to $3,900. It's worth looking into. This is one I did want to show you. Him. So, a German St. Bernard candy container in white brown artificial silk plush, glass eyes, oil cloth collar, and head removed to reveal candy container, 1930s. $300 to $400. This is a silk plush. So, this is teddy bear material and inside of it you're meant to keep your candies so the 1930s the children of the 1930s with their news print their news print hands because the children of the 1930s doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter if you're the richest kid in the 1930s doesn't matter if you're the poorest kid in the 1930s your hands were covered in newsprint because you were constantly handling newspapers. They were just being chucked around everywhere, you know, because that's how people, you know, if there was an earthquake coming, I'm not sure that that's something that can be predicted now or in the 1930s. Okay, so bad example of a natural disaster. If there's A murderer on the loose you're gonna want to know you're gonna want to pass the newspapers along so the point of all that being the children of the 1930s have grubby grubby hands they're grabbing the furthest dog with their grubby little hands they're holding it, and then they're twisting the lid twisting the head off of the dog removing the dog's head and having to do a turning motion in order to get that head off and then they're picking out their little candies and you know the candy of the 1930s it's just like balls of sugar in a little tin foil probably and maybe Werther's Originals would be there you know 
I bet Werther's originals are old enough to have been around during the 1930s. So these 1930s children, they're grabbing their Werther's originals, they're grabbing their, their licorice, they're grabbing the caramels. And they're sticking their grubby little fingers on his coat. It's a wonder that this, this designs, like that he survived, it's a flawed design. I don't think there's been a soft material candy jar since or before. Cameras say cheese. in terms of Beswick pottery. The Beswick pottery was founded in Lawton, Staffordshire in 1894 by James Wright Beswick and his sons John and Gilbert. It initially focused on tableware and vases, then began to produce figurines from 1900. Okay, so we're gonna do a deep dive on these Beswick figurines. Beswick was sold by Royal Dalton in 1969. Pay attention to that. That could be important later. We don't know. But production continued under the, sa the name Beswick until 1989 when Beswick and Dalton and animal figurines were combined. Were combined. Were combined as Royal Dalton. I mean, I'm just pronouncing it a number of ways so that maybe at one point I'll get it right. The name Beswick returned to use in 1999 until the factory closed in 2002. Okay, so that could be really important. There's no Beswick figurines from after 2002. Produced from 1900, Beswick's animal figurines remain its most desirable wares. Mm. I just burped in my mouth. I don't know if you could tell. I'll have to watch it back. Anyways. I'm going to continue on. <laughs> Again, Beswick's animal figurines remain its most desirable wares. By 1930, these figurines were successful and a major part of the factory's production. Aided by the company's introduction of high-fired bone china in 1934, Beatrix Potter figurines produced from 1946 and Disney figurines produced from 1952 are also popular. Prices for Beswick wares rose after the closure of the factory in 2002. Of course, supply and demand, it's a basic economic principle. There's no more supply, demand goes up. And let me just pause this real quick to tell you a theory. Why were Beanie Babies always destined to fail as a collectible because obviously the market bust and the supply and demand was too much. There was too much supply, drowned out the demand, all that, you know, all of that. But also because it's harder to keep them pristine than something like a porcelain figurine or a Barbie. Like Barbies come in boxes. You know what I mean? Like, it being a loose, stuffed animal makes it a harder item to make it through the years. All right. All right, let's go, let's dive right in. So this is a rare Beswick foal designed by Arthur Greddington. Arthur Greddington is a name you're gonna wanna remember. He is kind of a huge deal when it comes to these porcelain figurines. He's designed a ton of them. First version has long ears, second version has short, near, short ears. This guy goes for $700 to $850. Let's look right here. A rare Beswick Shire mare designed by Arthur Greddington, of course. Model number 8, 8, I told you I struggled with numbers. 818, 
why is that such a hard number to say? But this guy went for $3,200 to $3,900. Wowzer, right? That's a pretty penny. That's a stamp in your stamp book. That's more than a stamp. That's a whole row of stamps. All right. A rare Beswick Shire Mare designed by Arthur Creddington, of course. 5200 to $6,500. That's enough to buy at least a couple cartons of milk, if not more than a couple cartons. If you're familiar with Lil Sebastian, that looks exactly like Lil Sebastian. And of course, who is it designed by? None other than Arthur Greddington. $6,000 for this guy. Worth every penny. Let's turn to the expertise of Judith. This is Judith's pick, I think, for essentially all of these Beswick figurines. This guy, he's worth $8,000. Kruger, let's do it in a British accent. Kruger was the last pit pony to work at Chatterley Whitfield Colliery and was retired in 1931. The first model from this set of four was presented to HRH Princess Royal on her visit to Chatterley Whitfield Mining Museum to open the new pit on October 13th, 1987. Like I said, none of, like, it doesn't feel like real words. Like, I know it's words, I can see that. But, like, it feels very... Mmm... I went to the University of North Carolina, and one of our official mascots was Ramsey the Ram. Here's a ram. Another one of our mascots kind of is like the foot, a, a foot covered in tar. Kind of like Dan Schneider's. Huh. Dan Schneider's Nickelodeon logo. I wonder if somebody in the Tar Heels history was a bit like Dan Schneider. <sighs> Not something to dwell on. Okay. This one. A rare Beswick Grebby, designed by Arthur Greddington. Model 1006. This model is a part of the stylistic model series. Arthur Greddington had to let you know that he knows that ducks do not have heads as large as that. This is a part of the stylistic collection. Arthur knows what animals look like. He makes that his priority, his business. Arthur Greddington knows animals. Ah, Robert Donaldson is another name in the designing of these things field. Hmm. This is interesting. So this says that it came out from 1971 to 76, but if you look at it, you'll see. That's the character from the movie Happy Foot. Feet. Happy Feet. How did that happen? A glitch in the Matrix, right? Isn't she just the cutest little thing? I didn't get it, right? I'll be honest with you. I didn't get it until I just... A rare Beswick Beatrix Potter's Tale of Glau Gloucester. This mouse on a spindle. What's Beatrix Potter? I'll have to learn more about that.
that's me and my dog. Me and my little dog in my perfect little pink pajamas with my little short hair. That's me. What an unlikely duo these two are. It's a very serious German Shepherd with a very whimsical woman. When I think German Shepherds, I don't think whimsy. No offense to German Shepherds. If you are a breed of dog that would like to be associated with whimsy, I would suggest that you kind of loosen up your image a bit, you know? Because people think German Shepherd, they think the police, and that's just kind of an intense reputation, is it not? Oh, lordy. I didn't even pay attention, but this is called Love Locked In. She's got Cupid in shackles. That's toxic if you're in a relationship like that and it's not something you really signed up for. That's not all right. Here are some character jugs. This is what the people have been begging for. Give us more character jugs. Mm. Lardro. Lardro. I know it's not pronounced that way, but I just don't know how it's pronounced. Very muted colors on these. Vases, 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 vases. Hmm. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I do not understand. Well, I do understand, but I do not approve of the Rachel Zegler hate right now with the Snow White stuff because I think that most of the hate comes from this one interview. Yes, there's an interview where she, she says that Snow White's going to be different this time. I don't. Okay, apparently people loved the original. Okay, okay, okay. But I think she's also getting a lot of hate because there's this one interview with one of the late night men and she's talking about how she goes to the Disney parks and she stands around the Snow White ride um, and he's like, why do you do that? And she's like, because I'm a narcissist. And I think a lot of people are, you know, they take that as, oh, that's, what? But like, Everybody in Hollywood is a narcissist. And like, narcissist is not a term that's like, bah, bah. Or maybe it is, you know, that's how it's defined. But like, she doesn't mean that she's diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. <laughs> People are so intense about it. 
it's a lot. Grown adult women are so intense about this like 20 something. 21 or whatever, however old she is, 23, I don't know. They're so intense about it. Yeah. I saw an article comparing like how she's been treated over it to like Robert Pattinson used to literally be like, oh yeah, Twilight's the stupidest thing that I've ever heard of. Like, oh yeah, everybody that likes Twilight is stupid actually. I don't understand why anyone would like Twilight. Like Robert Pattinson used to say that and people were like, <laughs> you're so funny. Robert, kiss Kristen, you know. This, like, the four, the, the clovers on this cat look like, truly like, it's ironic, you know, because this is the most unlucky thing you could have in your home. This is the most cursed object you could have in your home, but it's okay because you can't afford it because it's $1,600 at the very minimum. One last section because I'm getting kind of sleepy. We will do the comic books. We'll look at them and see them, the Marvel comic books. But while you look at the Marvel comic books, you can zoom in, use whatever features you have available to you. I'm gonna go on a little, well, I'm gonna say my piece about Marvel. I like, I was about to say love, but then it switched to like in the middle of the word. That's why it sounded weird. I enjoy a superhero romp every now and again. I used to love the X-Men movies, like the original X-Men with Anna Paquin. But I don't have time to watch 4,732 movies. And I shouldn't need to have seen all 4,732 of the movies in order to understand the plot of one movie. I shouldn't have needed to see, you know, X-Men, Wolverine, Infinity War in order to understand Ant-Man. Case in point, right? <sighs> WandaVision. I loved the concept. I wanted to get to enjoy it fully. I loved the first several episodes. I was eating them up like a chocolate mousse. Like a chocolate mousse is how I was eating them up. But then episode four or five of WandaVision, we start getting into these nitty gritty details that apparently come from one of the Avengers or another one of the Avengers. It's just like, okay, so I don't get to enjoy WandaVision because I haven't seen the Infinity Zone or whatever else. <sighs> I just think that some things should be standalone, and I have yet to see anything in the Marvel Universe that doesn't, isn't super self-referential to the rest of the Marvel Universe. Okay, this is the last thing before we go to bed. We're going to in the evening on Victorian dolls. Uh, yeah. This one. Head of the ba head of a baby, body of a woman. If your eyes are opened, you know, do look at that. Take it with you. Head of a baby, body of a woman. Oh my god. This is tragic, really. Her feet are turned entirely inwards. This would be a painful medical condition. And probably with little recourse and being in the Victorian era. Hmm. Today's beauty standards are a little bit different from this, right? Today, we value having a bigger mouth, having a bigger smile, having bigger lips. 
Back then, everyone looked like they were sucking on a lemon. That's okay. But, the brows were heavy. Look at the heavy brow. The fine brow. Very, very brow, brow, brow for these dolls that are like presumably supposed to be baby dolls. They have such brows. Okay. If you've ever been self-conscious about your forehead, Don't be. My husband is shrieking at me. I don't think he realizes I'm filming. And by shrieking, I don't mean in a mean way. I just mean like... Being like, hello. There's a lot going on here. A Trendon Sasha Greger boy doll in original wool sweater and denim jeans. It looks like Andy Warhol, but also like Card Delvine. Has a Livestrong bracelet on. Just interesting. That was fun, right? Like and subscribe. Sweet dreams. <laughs>